great, uh, just very creative guy. Uh, was media director at the church for four or five years? Something yeah, I was like around that. five years. Yeah, about five yep. years. Uh, so did that full time for a while, and I'll let him tell you what he's doing now for work and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but absolutely qualified uh, to talk on this subject tonight. Uh, four kids, is that right? Or? Yes. <laughs> it's it. hard it's to keep like track. Get one, two, yeah. three. yes, four. Four yes. kids, and they've all got their own little gadgets. Uh, so, um, so definitely qualified to talk to you. So, without any further ado, let's let's welcome Scott Whitlow. Hello. Um, like I said, my name is Scott Whitlow, and uh, I've been doing uh, programming in IT uh, ever since I was 17 years old. Um, I develop iOS apps for a living, and uh, I uh, also manage a group of developers. So uh, when Pastor Wayne approached me about this, I, I was kind of wavering about, you know, do we need this class, or, or what will I talk about, and, and different things. And so I started just doing a little bit of research. And when I did research on the subject, the, the statistics shocked me so much um, that I contacted Pastor Wayne and I said, yeah, we definitely need to do this. Um, this is definitely something that, that uh, needs to be talked about. And tonight, this is, I'm not a great speaker like Pastor Jeff is or Ben Herndon is. <laughs> I'm a guy. That, <laughs> I'm a guy that sits behind a Mac all day long and develops things and does think geeky stuff. So, I want to make this more conversational and more relaxed. So, if you guys have a question during the presentation and, and during what we're talking about, go ahead and ask it. Um, I want this to be very interactive. Uh, I see some of you kind of brought your devices with you. That's a good thing. So, the first verse that kind of stuck out to me. <clears throat> is Proverbs 22:15. It says, a young person's heart is filled with foolishness. And that was kind of a scary verse when I read that because, um, you know, when I, was, when I was growing up, and I think most of us here when we were growing up, this stuff didn't exist. We didn't have the dangers on the Internet. We didn't have the, the junk that's out there now so easily, you know, accessible um, to our kids and especially to, to me growing up. Um, so it's, it's definitely an eye-opener once we start, once I started kind of reading the, the, the stats and everything, and I'll just kind of provide some of them for you here. So a recent study of ninth grade boys was conducted of which ones viewed porn or had been exposed to pornography on the internet. The results, 100% of all ninth grade boys were found to be accessing porn. That's, that's the first one that I came across when I first started studying this, which blew me away. <coughs> Average age of first internet exposure to pornography, that's 11 years old. That's the average age. 93% of boys are exposed to porn sites before the age of 18, most while doing homework. So most while doing things that they would normally be <coughs> looking up for school, they'll run across this type of stuff. This is why I'm thinking this is so important to, to take some time out to, to view this and to block it. <coughs> 70% view pornography 30 minutes straight at a time. That's for that age group. That means basically there's, there's no parental uh, presence in the house or around them, or they're having computer access or internet access in their rooms alone if they're be able to view it that long of a time. Uh, one out of every five teenage girls will send a naked or sexually explicit photo of themselves. And that part right there is not even the shocking statistic. The shocking part is the teenage girls that were polled in this survey were Christian girls who attended church regularly. A sad statistic is the largest consumer of internet pornography is the 12 to 17 years old age group. And again, this is something I came across. Pornographic websites have grown to a $4.2 million business across the internet. Children's characters now that are searched for in, on, in Google and other search engines are linked to thousands of porn links, including Pokemon, Action Man, and others. So innocent searches can pull up those links. And uh, basically, porn businesses, they pay for advertisement on Google, Yahoo, Bing, others like that to get their links there. Uh, they know that they can hook them. If they can hook them in now, they will have them for life. And the U.S. porn revenue this past year exceeded the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC combined of $6.2 billion. 
So to say that uh, there's definitely an enemy out there and they're after our kids is, <laughs> that's, that's definitely something that we should be concerned about as parents. Um, my feeling is, I was just talking to Tanya about this. That, that's my wife, Tanya, over there. She's the beautiful one. <laughs> she's the reason why I know God does exist, because she's with me. <laughs> so, but I was talking to her the other night, and I'm just like, you know, after reviewing all this stuff, it's like you can really see that Satan knows that if he hooks them when they're young, and if he gets them in, when they're in their impressionable years like that, he'll have them for life. They'll be struggling with that for life. That'll be a thing that they have to overcome again and again and again and again. 47% um, of parents admit, admit that ensuring their teens are safe online can be overwhelming. So who here loves technology and the frustration that it provides? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be only us geeks. <laughs> and, and the people that are in the business, we like, hey, that, that gives us a paycheck. <laughs> um, the rest of us, though, usually it's so difficult. And that's another thing that I was talking to Tanya about the other day. It's almost like the enemy has a design of these big corporations, Apple, Microsoft, Google, uh, all these major corporations making this stuff difficult when it doesn't really have to be. But they make it such a time consuming issue that it's hard for parents to even keep up with the technology. So what we're trying to do in this class is to make it easy to understand. Um, and, and just to, just to kind of warn you, you kind of will get a little techie here in some areas. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible and make it easy for understand. And then also, like I said, you guys are welcome to ask questions during, and we'll have a question and answer session afterwards, too. So the next verse comes to mind, yeah. And the crowds asked him, what then shall we do? <laughs> All these problems happening, what shall we do? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I think the first thing that you really want to do with your kids, and I think Pastor Wayne kind of covered this, so I'm not going to go over it majorly, is definitely have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you expect of them and what your household expects. You know, I, I, I hate to keep on using the word rules and blocks and everything like that. I, with my kids, I use guidelines. I tell them, you know, here are the guidelines for the house, and there's definitely punishment. If you do this, um, and my thing is, you find it once, it's going to be X amount of time. Find it twice, it's gone, and it's mine forever. You're not getting it back. That's how serious I am about it. Um, so, but <clears throat> some of the main things that when you look at breaking this down that you have to kind of cover with your, with your kids is Internet access. That includes laptops, computers, et cetera. Second thing would be social media access. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Instasin as I call it. <laughs> chat apps, Snapchat, Text Me Now, Game Chats, et cetera. Um, there's so many avenues of ways that uh, predators, online predators, as well as kids that you really don't want your kids associating with, mm -hmm. that's how they, that's their kind of loophole to get in. All these chat apps that's out now. Cell phones, iPhones, Androids, Windows, phones, et cetera. If anyone has a window phone, I'm, I don't know them, but <laughs> I'm sure it exists. Famous people have Windows phones. Yes, yes, Bill Gates. Uh, that's the only one I know. Uh, <laughs> no, no, there's others. Television and DVD players. Games, Xbox 360, which that's one of the biggest ones that I see that parents really overlook is the 360 area. So, basically, 67% of teenagers say they know how to hide what they do online from parents. So how do, we, how do we protect our kids in these areas? And one way is uh, when, when kids are little, you basically kind of have two separate kind of situations here. You kind of have the access zone protection and the uh, you know, the teenager protection. So when kids are little, you don't have to worry about that much. You just have to put some basic protection, some basic blocks on your devices, and that usually covers it for small children. They're, they just happen to come across. But for teens, um, they pretty much know how to get around. They're usually more tech savvy than, than most parents these days. 
Um, and it helps to, to basically know a little bit about how things work a little bit in the computer world, okay? So I'm gonna get a little techie with you guys here, <laughs> okay? A little geeky. <laughs> but I need to explain this so you guys kind of understand how things work in the computer world. So basically you have your computer and we'll say this is, you know, your laptop or whatever, awfully big one. <laughs> tabletop. Yeah, <laughs> tabletop laptop. <laughs> and then in this laptop and everything, you have what's called an operating system. It's called an OS, okay? Does anyone here know what that is? <laughs> yeah, few people. <laughs> Most people don't. So inside is an operating system. That will generally be called Windows. So you've heard Windows 7, Windows 8, yeah. those type of things. Or you can have a Mac operating system if you're saved. <laughs> so that's Mac OS. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then there's others, OK? So that's generally, so you have a computer, but it also has what's called an operating system. That tells you what the computer what to do, OK? The, the deal is here, you also have what's called a router. And this is usually what's at your home. It's usually a wireless router mm -hmm. or something like that. It's usually what the cable company gives you or DSL company to hook up to the internet. Now you have your devices down here. So this, this can be an iPhone, a, uh, an Android device, some other type of device. This also has operating systems on it, okay? So from here, this is where you get the Apple OS, commonly called iOS, but it's Apple products. Yeah. The iPhone, iPods all run Apple OS. You also have Android. So you'll often hear Android commercials and things online and advertisements for that stuff. Um, and, and there's a ton of different devices that all run the Android operating system. Okay, so that's another one. They have fun names like ice cream sandwich and jelly bean. And right. Stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it'll, it'll, it's, it's always, yeah, it's always kind of changing, but the concept's the same. It's an operating system. Then you'll have a Windows phone. That's an operating system inside a Windows phone. Or you can have a uh, you know, BlackBerry device. Yes. <laughs> the one BlackBerry user right here. <laughs> okay. So what happens? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, the, the last one remaining. There. <laughs> so what happens generally in the, in the OS world is when you get ready to access the internet, if you have any parental controls or just kind of simple things, what happens is that accesses the router and then this goes out to the internet, okay? So if you get on a laptop and it's a Mac, that's gonna access the router, hit to the internet. Apple OS, if you're at home, you're going there. Android, same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Going there to the router first, and then that's going out to the internet, okay? So what parents usually do is they'll put protection here and here, and sometimes here, very rarely here, sometimes, and this kids is, don't kids don't have blackberries, <laughs> only old people. <laughs> like Pastor Jeff. I'm older. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that's kind of generally what happens, okay? Today's teens, though, what they know how to do is to take this in about two minutes and bypass all of this stuff and go straight to the internet. Bypass that everything, okay? So they know how to, I mean, they, they have to kind of grab onto the router to get a wireless connection, but after that, they can get on the internet, bypass all your protection here and bypass all your protection here, okay? And generally, um, and this is stuff actually that I learned from my teenage son too, years and years ago, um, when he came home and was telling, telling me about some things, it was, took him maybe two minutes to get past it, the protection I had set up at the time, right. yeah. So, and he showed me how, and it was, the light bulb clicked on, I was like, oh yeah, you can get past that pretty easily. <laughs> so, so what, Basically, how do we protect that type, of, that type of system is what you want to do is instead of protecting just here, you want to protect this right here, your router, okay? 
Um, the best, easiest thing to purchase and to get is a router called iBoss router. Um, it does cost money, it's not free. And I'm not an iBoss representative, I don't sell the product at all. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not, I'm not here to push any product, Mac, Windows, whatever. Um, but that is the absolute best router to buy for if you have kids at home. Um, it can't be circumvented, you can't get around it. Pretty much if they're home, it's gonna get blocked. Um, it's really easy to set up, um, they have good guides online. I think the router itself is around like $59, and then there's a, a annual fee as well for the, all the filters and stuff that they do. Um, but if you want a, an absolute guaranteed way to block your kids and to help them out with the parental matters and stuff with the internet, that's definitely the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Usually I know it's good when they comment to me how frustrating it is for them to go to a website that they wanted to go to and it got blocked because of some reason and they complained to me. I go, good, it's working. And they have to so. come and get permission from us to allow it. If it's something we need for school or whatever, it has to be allowed by us. Right. Um, it also allows you to, uh, to get reports of where they've been all the sites that they've been tried to access but it's been blocked. So it does block uh, all, the, all the sites. Uh, it allows you to override if it's a homework assignment, something that it you know, misfired on and blocked a site that it shouldn't uh, have blocked. You can put in your password. Um, it has different levels of access. So parents could have a certain level of access, then your teens, and then smaller children. So it has several, several different uh, levels of access there. Okay, so there's three layers of protection that we kind of talked about so far. Number one, scripture-based layer protection. Can't stress enough this enough. Talk with your kids. Let them know what your expectations are. Second is the operating layer protection, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And third is the router layer, which is the most important layer. And that's an iBoss router. Um, there is an alternative, and I don't want to get, again, I don't want to confuse you guys too much or get off the get off track, but um, for those who are more technical here, there's a free thing called OpenDNS. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Um, OpenDNS is something you can put on, especially for younger kids, that will block pornography. Doesn't give you the fine grain control that iBoss does, but it is free. It's something that if you don't have the finances, at least get this, that on your router, then kind of take it from there. Open DNS. Open DNS. Did you ever use K9 stuff? Mm hmm. That's going to go in the uh, operating system. Yeah. Yep, that's what we use. So, for Windows 7 and 8, um, what I'm going to do is after this um, class, I'm going to go ahead and put up the, uh, the PowerPoint for everyone so where you guys can get to it. Click on these links and kind of explore around because I've also got links to the iBoss router, everything like that. Um, but one thing you want to do with both Windows and Mac is set up user controls um, and set up basically users for uh, each operating system, okay? So what that means is for Windows, how many, how many Windows users do we have here? Is everyone? And how many Mac users? <laughs> yeah, iPads, same thing. So iPads and iPhones, yeah. <laughs> So for on Windows desktop computers and laptops, you do want to spend the time to go ahead and set up um, a user account. Um, and Jeff, do you know really quick the, the steps on setting that up for, you, for Windows 7? I think it's pretty just start control panel and, yeah. Yeah, and you users. Just to, yeah, yeah, you just go to start control panel and go to the, uh, well, I've got it ready. I had, yeah. And then there's a user accounts. Under your control panel, there's user accounts and you can create. Uh, under manage user accounts, you can create uh, accounts for each one, each one of your users. 
But those are all those are local to the machine. Right, so, right. Which is all. Um, and, and again, what we're doing here is kind of laying the groundwork so you guys understand what to do. Obviously, if we went through every single step, we'd be here forever for days <laughs> going through every single little control and everything because there's there's usually a lot right, keep going yep <laughs> um, so there'll be a link here and I even got one for Windows 8 I will tell you this Windows 7 has some do you need another here you go <laughs> right, dried up markers out of the thing. Uh, Windows 7 has pretty good parental controls Windows 8 really improved parental controls majorly I, I cannot <laughs> stand Windows 8. I'm a Mac guy. I can't stand it. I don't think anyone can stand Windows 8. I've never used it. Yeah, it's it's horrible. <laughs> so the, uh, but for Windows 8, and they're getting ready to come out with Windows 8.1, uh, which apparently will help with the tiles. <laughs> with the tiles, everyone's upset about the tiles. So, uh, but as far as parental controls are concerned, it is better. <laughs> so here Pastor Jeff wrote it out. If you go to start, then control panel, and then click on user account, and then manage user accounts. That's how you get there. Are you talking about when you turn on your computer and each family member has a little box? Mm -hmm. and yes. they're each set up. That's yeah, right. that's user accounts. Right. Excellent. You attach a password to them. Right. And right. Don't, don't share passwords. Because what, what you don't want is you don't want, especially for teenagers, you don't want them getting into system settings because they can override a lot of things. And I, I mean, I know how to do it, and I know a lot of teenagers do it. You're smiling at me. You know how to do it. <laughs> You can override a lot of controls, and, for, and especially for teenagers, they'll do it in a heartbeat. Friends at school, it's all over the place. If they can get access to it, they'll do it, okay? Um, for the Mac, the blessed one. <laughs> Proverbs 18.22, who finds a Mac finds a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to see Pastor Jeff's eyes rolling about now. Uh, <laughs> Basically, the reason why I'm talking, <laughs> I figured you might like that. Um, it's not a Windows against Mac thing for me, honestly, because I use Windows, I use Mac, I use Android. I, mean, I, I use all kinds of things in my line of work because I have to. Um, so for me personally, I like the best technology that fits, okay? So for parental uh, controls and everything, you know, Windows 8, like you said, it stinks. Mm -hmm. But for parental controls, it's great. Mm -hmm. So if you have a computer that only your child accesses and you don't really access, I'd put Windows 8 on there, in there in a heartbeat. I really would. And then put on the controls. Um, you also get a report about the sites they visited in Windows 8 as well. So, uh, But as far as the ease of use in setting up parental controls, Mac is by far the easiest. They've just made it very, very simple to go into uh, system settings. You click on system settings, and there's an icon right there that says parental controls. <laughs> you literally just click on that icon. You set up a new user for your child, and it guides you through it, and you're done. Um, and what that does, it blocks pornography sites and everything. It's on the operating system level, OK? So we kind of talked about two, two categories of protection, the accidental protection for smaller children, the hey, they're a teenager and they have hormones protection. <laughs> <laughs> for smaller kids, much simpler, the OS layer. When I say OS, it's the operating system layer. So just Windows 8, putting that on. On, and the Apple OS and iPods and stuff, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But that's usually enough for smaller kids because they're not really into trying to find stuff. They're wanting to look up the latest thing on Nickelodeon or where, whatever. Um, and they're just, they're just wanting to get on the internet and have fun. Uh, and also for that, for the OS later, install K9. It's free. Put it on your computer. So any Windows operating system, any Mac operating system, what K9 is, is an, again, we're talking about multiple layers here. So you have the OS layer, which is just kind of simple protection, keeping them out of settings and everything. Then you have the K9 layer. The K9 layer basically is a web filtering software layer, okay? That'll filter out anything 
that just in case iBoss, if you have an iBoss router, just in case that misses, it gets, and vice versa. Okay? So the reason why you have the multiple layer and what I've seen before with our kids, um, and, and multiple things that I've seen is one uh, protect, level of protection will do pretty good. Another level of protection will be, do pretty good, but those two combined, it, it really does lock down the system pretty well to where they're not going to be able to get past things. K9 is really great because it has, it has lots of different categories. And like what you, what you said, I frequently get my older kids coming to me frustrated. I'm trying to you know, do my homework, and I can't, I can't get anywhere. You know? so, and, and again, and it's, it's got an administrative password. So OK, where, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to look up? You go to the site, you can check it out. You can put in an administrative password, and it will give them access to that site for 15 minutes. And then it blocks right. it again after, your, after the password expires. So that's really nice. You can also get reports of relevant and all that good stuff. And it's, it's, it's pretty tight. It, it's, uh, if you put it on like the, the typical setting, there are a lot of things where you'd go, you know what, that's okay, and it'll block them anyway. Right. Um, the one right. nice thing that K9 does is if, if a site doesn't have a rating or it's like kind of an unknown kind of thing, it will just block it. It'll say, I don't know what this is, so it's blocked. Okay. You know? Yeah. So. And that's a simple download you can download okay. from blue, the internet from, on you. You go to blue Yeah, K9 web. Or .org or something, something like that. that. I've got it listed. Yeah. <laughs> the link. Sure. So. I have a question. So yeah, the go ahead. K9 thing. Mm -hmm. um, is, can you set this up on um, that their user? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when I log out and go into mine, is the K9 is not on mine? K9 is not on yours. Okay. So you can just set it up per well, user. You can install it either way. Yeah. Okay. You can do it universal or either way. But if you you have the administrative password, so you can you can pull up K9. Type in your admin password and, and select like a time period, like one hour, two hours, or whatever, and just have unrestricted access okay. for, for that time. And just uh, the only thing you want to keep in, in mind with K9, I love K9. I still install it on all of our equipment. The only thing you want to keep in mind with that is, again, if you have smaller kids, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely great. It's the best thing. Uh, if you have teenagers, install it but they can bypass it in about two minutes and head to the router as soon as you're I out of the house. Know how you can do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll show you. You can't kill it. Like, yeah. You can get a task manager and kill it. And get around to the router in about two minutes. Yeah, they can't get around to my router. Yeah. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> I, <promise. laughs> I can show you how. <laughs> it's my house. <laughs> Invite. Wait, wait, just a second. Your house, you might be locked down pretty good. <laughs> yeah, my house, you can't get around. Yeah. Most parents' house, right. you can get around. <laughs> let, me, let me say that. Right. Jenny has a question. Yes. Uh, the K9, uh, can that be installed on the iPad? Is that the one you want to play? K9 does have a, uh, an iPad version for a browser. And it uses the same technology to filter. Um, it's a little slow on the iPad, what I've noticed. Um, we use another browser um, called. Uh, Safe No. Uh, I think it's called uh, MobiChip, I think, or MobiSip. It's M O B I C I P. It's, it's a little bit later in the, down in the slides. Oh, okay. That's the one that we use for, that, for our kids. Um, no, go ahead. Yeah. Before installing can I will we have to remove any other type of we have like be secure, be secure online. Mm -hmm. Things like that. That should be okay. Oh, that should be okay. I In think. Addition. Again, double layer is always yeah, good. Okay. The more layers yeah, you yeah. have. I mean, you don't want to just install like tons of stuff. Other, you know? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be like installing yeah. just like tons of stuff to where it slows your. Well, a lot of people have things like Trend or Norton or something. Norton like that. Intercept like, Security. You see, when you bring up your web browser, it has like the little green check mark, a little red X. Right. It'll block sites that it knows are dangerous. That that's good too. It won't it won't interfere. But oh, okay. trend, trend will let you. Trend is just looking for things where you might get a virus. Trend won't block porn. Uh, right. That blue coat will block porn. So. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So Scott. Yeah. I'm real ignorant with all this. So mm -hmm. canine is that something you pick up at Best Buy or you just do no, you just download search it. on canine? And yeah. yeah. If, actually, actually, if you do a Google search and just type in the word canine, it's the very top link. It's and canine it's web it's protection. Free. No, it's free. Not for home use. Not for home use. You have to register. You have to get a registration yeah. code for each and home use. It's it's free. The also other nice thing about K9 is it also forces Google Safe Search yeah. on your internet as well. Yeah. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically with Google and all these different uh, search engines, they have Safe Search on there that blocks a lot of the images and a lot of the links that come back, but it's not on my default. Google is a very liberal, liberal <laughs> company. Um, 
basically the different companies are out there. Google, very liberal. They they are don't they don't want to restrict anything. They don't want to block any porn. That includes the Android, the Google Play Store. Nothing's blocked. Everything's open. Um, so and we'll get to that later. You know, if you if you buy your kid a Kindle or an, an Android phone, just be aware that you've just given them really just a stack of porn. That I mean, they have full access to anything they want to download at that point for cheap. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. For, for they they block the the Google. Uh, the Google search and everything like that, so they do a good job. And it's just a link that you just download. If you're, if you're familiar with installing a program, if you're familiar with that a little bit, then you can just go through that step by step. So, hmm? yeah. Um, before you move on to teenagers, this is my son's iPod. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's only nine. Okay. And I homeschool, so I would say technology wise, he's probably more like eight or seven. Okay. <laughs> because, you know, he's with mommy a lot. Yeah. What we have on this right now is that in our family, he is not old enough to be online by himself at all, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. So what we have on this is, this is actually registered to me, mm -hmm. and it takes my password for him to do anything. Right. Is that good enough at his age? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, here in just a few slides, we'll kind of go over that and I'll show you kind of some of the controls. Do you have restrictions set up at all on there for him? Here, he can't, in order to even use a browser, you have to put a, my password in. There's to use a browser? There is no browsing for him. Okay, so there's no Safari browser at all. But, our, but why this is timely for us is our router just died. Like literally two days ago. I would, I would get the iBoss. We yeah. But is that one also fast enough to do streaming? Because we mm -hmm. do a lot of streaming. We yeah. watch almost no regular TV anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Routers are right. Yeah. That's the same technology oh, in it that all the different routers have. <laughs> <laughs> different name. Same right. router. Thank you. Go ahead. I used to do, I had uh, Safe Eyes on my computer. And, um, similar to what you're saying, this iBoss mm -hmm. does. I was able to... Each person had their own name, and I could say, oh, she could get on for an hour a day and go to these sites, and, and then my husband could get on for an hour a day and go to these sites. <laughs> 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 and, so, and so I just regulated it, um, and I used that, well, then, but um, I mainly had it when my teenager was home, but now she's gone, and, and my little kids aren't on the internet as much. So I was debating on whether to repurchase it again, because it was a something I paid for every year. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in a debate on whether to re-buy that. It was working for us. Um, okay. But now I'm deciding on what to do next now that my kids are on the Internet a little bit more. and They're always wanting to go, you know, to innocent sites at, at this point. But right. Bigger. Um, this iBoss thing sounds... Mm -hmm. Kind of similar, but is it blocking the router or is it just blocking? It is the router. It is the router. Is, what was Safe Eyes doing? Was it Safe Eyes is on the operating system level. So it wasn't. And it just kind of monitors. And I'm not very familiar with Safe Eyes, but I know a little bit about what it does. It monitors the sites that you go to and then will give you a report from what I understand. Yeah. Um, I think it probably does a little bit of filtering as well, I think. Yeah. Like I could just block. Anything, and I could even go and say, nope, they can't go on Facebook today, and I block it. Right. <laughs> canine will let you do that too. Canine will let you do that too. Canine are very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The difference between Safe Eyes and Canine, the reason why I always recommend Canine, it's free, and it does very similar to what Safe Eyes does. <clears throat> so there's not really much benefit there. Um, so that's why I always kind of recommend Canine to install, and then get the uh, the upgraded router or something on your router side to to block that. Using both, you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Okay, due to time, I'm going to skip some of yeah. this stuff here. You want to jump ahead? Yeah, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Devices, you guys get a get to get by all my Preaching. great oratory. <laughs> <laughs> There's the uh, boss router link that'll be there when you guys uh, when I upload this. Okay, we'll jump ahead to really quick to social media access, and then I want to try and get to, uh, to iPhones and iPods and stuff, because that's a real important one. So Proverbs 13.20 says, Become wise by walking with the rise, hang out with fools, and watch your life fall to pieces. Um, also, obviously, 1 Corinthians 15.33, Do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. There's nothing that I've seen more across the country than when teens get on Facebook, 
and start hanging around with the wrong crowd, that's one of the first connections that they'll, they'll have is on Facebook before they even meet the person face to face. That's how they, they connect with the, the you know, teen or whatever at, at their school. Um, so I saw this, the one out of every five US teenagers who regularly log onto the internet say they have received an unwanted sexual solicitation via the web. Solicitations were defined as a request to engage in sexual activities or sexual talk or to give personal sexual information. So that's one out of every five. That's usually through, and the article went, I mean, it was a long article, but the majority of it was through social media access, Facebook, other things like that. 75% of teens have given out personal info to someone they don't know, <clears throat> including photos and physical descriptions. They are willing to share personal information online about themselves and their family in exchange for goods and services, 75%. So, to, so when you're installing, giving them a Facebook account, and each parent is different, um, each parent has to know their child and know their maturity level, whether they can have a Facebook account or not. But just know there's the dangers there of chatting. And when 75% of teens give out their personal info automatically without thinking about it, that concerns me as a parent. Um, I'll just tell you what we do in our house. We don't allow Facebook for our kids, okay? Um, that's not saying that that's the right thing to do. That's just what we do. My thing is, I lived a long, long time without Facebook. <laughs> I turned out so-so. Eh, <laughs> um, and we've had, you know, our, our kids, I think they're going to be fine without having a Facebook account when they're younger. Um, so that's just some, something to, to kind of give some thought about, especially knowing the, the dangers that are out there. 77% of the targets for online predators were age 14 or older. So they're not targeting the real young ones, they're actually targeting the teens. I'm skipping ahead here, so. So social media access, the big five that you need to be aware of. Facebook, obviously, There's Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat and Vine, that may be something you're familiar with or something you're not familiar with. Text me now, kick, or other chatting apps. Okay? And we'll kind of go through these. I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of speed this up just a little bit because I know we're. So, Facebook, first of all, determine if it's even necessary. Um, if it is, you know, if, if you do feel like they're mature enough to handle it, talk with your teens about posting what they post. Remember that everything that you post is out there for the world to see, is out there for their pastor to see, for your friends to see. <laughs> Uh, for future employers to see. That history is hard to get rid of. I've told my children that if you wouldn't want your dad to put the picture on the two big screens on Sunday morning <laughs> in front of everyone, then it's not appropriate to be posted on Facebook. Yeah. And if you wouldn't say it with a microphone in your hand standing behind Pastor Wayne's pulpit in Sunday morning church, it's Don't not say appropriate it. to be said right. on yep. Facebook. That's what I tell them. Yeah. Now, you know, whether, whether they actually do it or not. Actually do it or not. Yeah. You know, they, it just gives them something to think about. That's my guideline. You know, right. That's how, I, I try to impress upon them, that's how public Facebook is. Because what the Internet does to you is it gives you this feeling, there's this layer of anonymity. You mm. feel like you're just sort of talking to nobody. Like It's like you can't see right. me, right? right? It's like this. You see kids do this, you can't see me, and I'll buy about <laughs> Right? If you can't see my face, you can't see me. Well, if right. I'm sitting here typing at the computer, you, it's like I'm anonymous. And I'm telling them, no, you're not anonymous. You're, you're more anonymous there than anywhere else, right? Everybody knows who you are. So, and, you know, I'm Pastor Jeff. Everybody knows you're my kids, right? So anything that shows up on your page, 10 people at church are going to be talking to me about it before I even get in the door, right? Right. So you don't have that advantage. I'll call that an advantage. You know, you don't necessarily have that advantage. You know, maybe you can do something like that in your small group. Yeah, I would encourage you to do that in your small group. Say, hey, let's get together. Let's watch each other's kids, you know. Let's follow, follow your friends you know, your, in your small group. Follow, follow their kids on Twitter and see what they're tweeting, you know. And then if you see something, tell them uh, because you can't watch. Yeah. Everybody all the time. Yeah. Sorry, and no, what, what's interesting though is I had that same exact same conversation with my kids. Yeah. If you wouldn't get behind the pulpit and say it with a microphone, don't post it. Mm -hmm. 
if you wouldn't want it up on the big screens, because I know how to get it up on the big screens. <laughs> so if you don't want it up there, don't post it. <laughs> um, we also have another rule in our house. When they do, or when they are mature enough to have start having some of these social accounts, passwords. There's no secret passwords in our house. We know the passwords to their user accounts. We know their passwords to their Facebook accounts, everything. So that's a non-negotiating factor with our teens, with our kids, OK? If they change the password, there is a punishment involved, actually. So just something to keep in mind. Take private chatting out of the equation for Facebook is what I would highly, highly recommend. There really is no good reason. What I tell my kids is, you can talk to these people actually face to face. <laughs> you can get on the phone. If they have a phone, you can text them. You don't have to have another means to contact them as well. Um, so with iBoss Router, you can block only Facebook chatting without blocking Facebook. So that's a unique thing to, to that one. Um, the, or just only with the router? Uh, just with the router, there's an ability to block just the chat. Settings on there, right? And uh, you can do it with a normal router to block it, but it's way technical. <laughs> so it, it has has to do to get in there with the settings and everything. Messaging is blocked in Facebook or not? No, you can't yeah. block the messaging in Facebook. No, you can't block the messaging in Facebook as it is. Mm -hmm. If you have an yeah. iBoss router, they have a feature that can block the Facebook chatting, chatting like but the, messaging, the message, messaging. the private messaging, that can be blocked, okay. but still allow Facebook to operate. So your child right. can have access to Facebook, but, not but just the not the chatting. Stuff. Right. Okay. But that's usually the dangerous stuff. It is, yeah. That's so, interesting. Um, yeah. Secrets are really powerful with yeah. teens yeah. and with kids, and the enemy can come in and use that in a heartbeat. So, In fact, when I was looking at this, it's the number one way for online predators to obtain info is through Facebook. Yeah. From the, that was from the National Crimes Against Children Research Center. So, uh, Twitter, I'm moving fast here because we're running out of time. Twitter, uh, just remember that with Twitter, completely unfiltered porn access. So if you want them to have completely unfiltered porn, give them Twitter, put it on their device. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really what it boils down to. In two seconds, you can, it's just like Google, okay? If you're not filtering it, if you don't have an iBoss router, if they have a phone, and once they go out of your house, if they have a Twitter app and stuff, two seconds, they have unfiltered access. So just keep that in mind. When you're giving your kids these, and you're seeing these apps appear, what you're actually providing for them, OK? Um, there's really no history in Twitter. So what they search for, it's gone after they search it and hide it in a second. So it's not like they're not like a computer. And, and most kids, if they're tech savvy, they know how to delete their history and get rid of all that stuff. Um, but with with Twitter and with the OS level, there's ways to get that back. And there's some of the filters and stuff you put on there. On this level, with the Twitter on their phone, no way of getting that back. So just really think about this one. Uh, if you do allow Twitter and Facebook, I recommend the open computer area rule. Um, basically. No cell phones, no iPods, no computers back in their rooms, things like that. Put it in a central place in your home is what I would highly recommend. However, Twitter is still great for following news or trends if you use responsibly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, we, church, yeah. Right? And, and, and I don't want to get you guys saying that Twitter is porn. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just like Google. Google doesn't equal porn, but Google, when used it responsibly, can, because you can do a search on it in a heartbeat. So it's just like anything else. I just kind of want you guys to keep this in mind when you see those apps and when you see them downloading things, what it's about. Instagram, same thing. This one for teens, to me, is a just delete it if you see it kind of thing for teens. Yeah, for me personally. From what I've seen and everything, for adults and everything, it does depend on your teen, about how they are, their maturity level again. Um, but again, no filter for Instagram, immediate porn access. So just keep that in mind when they're downloading that. Yeah, can you, can you explain what? No, Instagram. That's Pinterest. That's Pinterest. That's Pinterest. Can you explain how? Because I don't think that I even know. I mean, how how do you? I didn't know either. How would you search, how would you search for porn on Instagram? Yeah, what? Well, I, I had no. I I thought it was just 
you yeah, know, Im me. images back and forth or whatever. <laughs> we actually, I downloaded it on my phone. I never had installed it before. I had Tanya kind of look up some keywords that would be safe for her to look up, not safe for me. Mm -hmm. And it was instantly stuff that she's like, no way. no way would I want my kids to have this. Wow. That's basically what it is. It's just pictures. Right. It's, just it, it, it's just like if you allowed them internet access on their phone, unfiltered, with Google or something like that. If you're going to allow that, then you're fine. Go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. I mean, they're, they're do. Remember, Instagram just was a uh, right, right. So. Well, I knew that, but I didn't. Right, right. So it was pretty. It was pretty instant. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, Really? Wow. So, I don't want to scare, scare everyone into thinking everything is evil and everything. Again, if your kid wants to look at this stuff and he's going down that road, talking, using scripture, having that relationship with your teenager is going to go a lot more longer, a lot more further than just blocking everything, you know. My thing is, I don't want it in my house. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it when you're outside of this house, not in my house. And well, the as for me in my house, we were going to serve the, the Lord. To keep accidents from happening too. Right, exactly. Uh, Snapchat and Vine. Are you guys familiar with this one? Yeah. Snapchat. No, Snapchat basically is primarily used for sexting with teens. Okay. If you see Snapchat on your on your teen's phone, uh, basically the pics that they send each other, it gets deleted on the server immediately once they view it. So there's no history of the picture even being sent. Proven that the, it's advertised that the that the images are deleted, but isn't there some lawsuit against Snapchat that in fact they're not? Really well, that's deleted? yeah, that's one of the problems because <clears throat> Snapchat is getting to a little bit of legal ramifications there because teenagers are using Snapchat and that's considered child pornography. Um, so when you have a talk with your teens, by the way, and, and this is a little bit later on the slides, but I don't think we're gonna have time to get to it. You do need to let them know that. When they, if they send a, a picture of themselves or receive a picture over their, their text or through Snapchat or whatever, that is illegal, okay? That's a felony in some states. Um, and they're getting ready to pass a law where it's gonna be a felony in all states. That's called child pornography, basically. Doesn't matter who the recipient is. If it's transmitted over digital uh, airwaves, then it's child pornography. Again, no history. This is probably the most dangerous one. If I go ahead, can I address that? The uh, mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Also, not only is it a felony for someone to send it, but let's just say person A sends uh, is sex, sexting person mm -hmm. B. If person B receives it and does not report it, if you really want to go by the letter of the law, person B can be guilty of sexting as well. Yep. Yeah. So. For example, if, if someone is sexting one of your kids, what we've told our kids is let us know right away so we can report it. Because like I said, the recipient, if, if the recipient takes no action, even if the recipient just deletes it and does no, nothing, legally if someone really wants to be a stickler, that person who received it can be charged as well. Yep. And what's sad is when you see Snapchat in these apps, on the app store. I mean, honestly, let's think about this. Think about it logically. Why create an app that is primarily sent to send a picture to someone and then it deletes it as soon as you watch it? Why do that? Unless you got something to hide. Mm -hmm. That's the it's only reason. Not like your regular phone things. Is that why the team Right. So in other words, you know, some some idiot out there figured out, hey, Apple is holding these images in your messages. And these parents can, yeah, you got history to look at. Idiot wrote a Snapchat app, and then all of a sudden it became popular amongst teens. And a lot of parents don't even know about this app that exists. If you find it on your teens or your own child's phone, yeah. So, but if you find it on your teen's phone, I would honestly, or iPod or iPad, I would honestly just delete it immediately and then have a talk with your teen. I really would, because there really is no history there. It's, it's just a dangerous app. <clears throat> um, I'll go through Vine real fast. Anyone familiar with Vine? Heard about it? Just remember that it's six second videos, post them online, user Twitter feeds. Again, no history. Uh, recent tech article on Vine that I saw the other day. <clears throat> Twitter
Twitter's Vine is America's hottest new porn search engine. Searching porn or any other not safe for work tag will find you a veritable cornucopia, that's a Jeff Little word, <laughs> of sexy six second clips. Twitter's censorship free stance is well established. It's part of the reason certain people prefer Twitter to the slightly more popular Facebook. Twitter has repeatedly been over backwards to maintain a censorship free space in the digital world. Uh, their stance on Twitter, just like I talked to you about before, the, the two second access to porn, if you're giving your child Twitter access on their phone or iPod device, same thing applies for Vine. Okay, if you see the Vine app, and these apps, they're always something new kind of coming out. So it's something you kind of, again, you know, I, when I talk to my teens and my kids and stuff, I'll ask them for the device, and just when I ask them for it, they, they have to give it to me, and I'll kind of check and see what they've downloaded. Um, and I'll kind of go over that here in just a second, <clears throat> some settings that I set up. Let me get through this. Uh, text me now, kick, and other chatting apps. Um, same, same principles as before. My advice, honestly, for, for teenagers and stuff, you either need to have a, a really serious conversation with them about who they're talking to, or delete them. It depends on your teenager, okay? Kick is another one that's big on the sexting back and forth. That's another big one that teens use because parents really don't know about that app that much. Um, but it's popular with the teens. Okay, so let's go. Should my teen even have a phone? Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> and really, let me, let me go back here. Should my teen have a phone is, is a thing I do, do want to touch base on real quick. I don't know how many of you guys have teenagers that actually have phones yet um, or have been asking for some. Uh, when, when my kids were little, kind of growing up in their teenage years, they started asking for some all the time. Their main thing was, all my friends have cell phones. Yeah. They all have cell phones. And I'd say, well, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm your parent. Then their next thing would be, well, what if I'm in an emergency? What if there's a fire? And then I would say to them, well, all your friends have a cell phone, so you have a way to get a hold of me. So either way, you're covered there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so our rule in our house is when you're mature enough to hold, hold a job part-time or something like that, then we can start talking about cell phones. So that's just, that's just something that we do. It's not the, the, the best thing to do, but it's something we do. I have a question for Kendall. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the same same thing as text me now. Okay. It's a free texting service that right. goes over the Wi-Fi. And so, our, um, for her, um, it, it changes the phone number ever so often, and so then you have to retell your friends your new phone number. Yeah. And so, what I do on hers is I she's not allowed to have a phone number that I don't know who it is. Yeah. So. It's kind of a it's kind of a tough one with that one because okay. you can create a new account with Text Me Now uh, and uh, and the uh, Text Plus, text plus um, and then delete the account after you've created it and just okay. go back and forth. Yeah, and, she knows how to do yeah, and but it, but it, it's, how old is she? She's just turned twelve. She's just turned twelve. Nah, I wouldn't worry too much. Okay. Um, the only thing you want to be worried, concerned about there is really the who she's chatting with and who right. she's texting. So, yeah, <laughs> there's the culprit right there. <laughs> so, Ashlyn has a Kindle Fire, and I've just disabled the browser. There's yeah, no browser. Kindle, browser. Kindle. I'll be honest, and I have I have a thing on Kindle as well <laughs> here in just a minute. But Kindle's kind of worrying me just a little bit because of uh, Google's stance on their Play Store. They have the same stance that Twitter has, which is anything if goes. anything goes, porn and everything. Yeah, so you can, you can be yeah, searching, but the account tied to the account right. tied to my Amazon account. Right. She can't buy anything without. Right. That. And that's I have to sit there and type in the password. Exactly. Get anything. That's what you want. <laughs> and it's the same way with all of my with my my right. daughters both have iPhones, but I have the password. Right. So they can't they can't even download a free app unless I put the password. Oh yeah. In. All day long I get the. Can you put this in, Dad? Can you put this in, Dad? Yeah, please. What, what, are we, what am I getting? That's yeah. What I'm asking. What am I getting? Exactly. So. Um, so with Kindles and with iPhones and iPods, obviously, you want that link to your account, yep. not for her to have right. a separate account. Right. Yeah. Um, but be careful with the, with the Kindles and stuff. For, for us, it was the stuff you could even search up on the App Store without even buying it. Right. You could search it up, and you're still seeing nudity. Yeah. You're still seeing pornography just on the, the icons, and you can click and get a full picture. 
and there's pornography right there without even getting the app itself. So my thing on the Kindles was I, my, my kids actually got a Kindle uh, a couple of Christmas ago, last Christmas. I replaced them with iPad minis, not because I'm an iPad mini fan, it was because it offered me the parental controls that I needed for them and to not get a bunch of access to a bunch of junk. So that's what I did. Um, Kindles just doesn't have that built in. Uh, so cell phones, iPhones, Androids, and more, we're here at this subject. I am not going to go through the smart limits now, but <laughs> AT&T smart limits for, how many AT&T people do we have here? We have AT&T and how many Verizon? Okay, so about half and half. Um, with AT&T, they have smart limits for wireless. Just get it immediately for your kids. It allows you to have allowed numbers and blocked numbers. Um, you can set up data. You can block their data access. If you call 611 from your cell phone, ask them to put a data block on your child's phone. That allows them to do texting, but not pictures. They can't send images through text. So that kind of negates the whole sexting back and forth. Okay? Um, but with, if you set up the allowed numbers and blocked numbers, then you're pretty safe. 